Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this unique opportunity to bring together trade promotion organizations from every continent and every time zone. Special thanks to those who have got up early or stayed up late to join us today. My name is Anne Chapaz, and I am the chief of the Institutional Strengthening Section, which is the team at ITC that has been running the WTPO Conference and Awards Program since 1996. I am proud to represent that long tradition today. This tradition has provided the foundation on which this year we've been able to adapt to unprecedented levels of uncertainty. We've had to postpone the conference itself to 2021, but the awards process had gathered so much momentum that it made sense to complete it so that we can share now excellence and recognize innovation. It's now that we're trying to lift our game. It's now that this innovation will be so useful to us all. To begin this special hybrid event, I would like to welcome some important guests, both here with us in Geneva and online. We have ambassadors or their delegates from each of the 18 countries that have been nominated. They are here to represent their countries at the highest level, and we thank them for their recognition of the importance of these awards. Your Excellencies, welcome. In particular, we have Mr. Ebel Quezon, the Minister Councillor for the Permanent Mission of Ghana here in Geneva. Ghana is the current conference host and therefore has a special role to play. There has been very positive support from the highest levels of the Ghanaian government. Welcome. Also a special guest today online with an important role to play is Dr. Afua Asabea Asa, the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, who are the host organization for the conference. Afua, welcome. We'll be hearing from Afua shortly when we check in with her and the rest of the awards jury members, whom I also warmly welcome to this event. Welcome also to all the nominated organizations. The excitement is mounting. All of you have demonstrated excellence, and you should be proud to have made it through a very tough awards process. And last, but definitely not least, I would like to introduce our new executive director, Pamela Coke Hamilton. As you know, Pamela joined ITC only two weeks ago, but she is familiar with our role with TP, our work with TPOs and has a very strong understanding of the role that you play. Please join me in welcoming her to the podium. This has become a skill. So, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, excellencies, ambassadors, heads of TPOs, uh, friends, ladies and gentlemen. This month we were to have been together in Accra, Ghana. We would have been engaged in two days of intense but informative discussions, sharing of experiences and building of new partnerships. We would have been enjoying the calming sounds of the Kologo lute and Gonje fiddle, or the intense rhythms of the Kete and the Adua drum and bell arrangements. If I'm massacring this, please forgive me. Uh, <laughs> we might have been breaking bread over some jollof or banku and tilapia. But 2020 has had different plans for us all, and we have had to learn to adapt and to adjust. In 2021, we'll be together in Ghana, but I thought it was important that today we will take the opportunity to recognize excellence and celebrate the hard work, innovation, and commitment of trade promotion organizations. Because never has your work been more challenging and more needed than it has been during this pandemic. And, no, and I know this because in a past life, not so long ago, I headed a regional TPO, the Caribbean Export Development Agency. I know your challenges, but I also know the scope you have to make lasting and transformative impact. Micro, small and medium-sized enterprises have been at the core of those hardest hit by the economic and health-related impacts of the pandemic. 
They will also be at the center of the recovery as we build back better and more boldly. Your role as TPOs is to provide both a lifeline and to MSMEs, sorry, that so desperately need it, but also to develop, roll out, and scale up solutions that help them to build re their resilience. And this resilience must be premised on good trade and open markets. We must continue to support and call for a reinvigorated multilateral system. It will be built on new partnerships, including better linkages within and between supply chains, as well as uplifting traditional sources of collaboration at the country level, such as with credit unions as a source of cash, credit, and collateral. And it must be built on inclusiveness and sustainability for a green recovery. At ITC, we commit to supporting you as you support your clients. Now more than ever, we will count on you to be our eyes, ears, and multipliers on the ground, helping us to design and deliver interventions that are responsive, relevant, and replicable. These awards are a symbol of that partnership between TPOs and ITC, and to our commitment to connecting TPOs to each other and to identifying and celebrating good practice. Awards are given in three categories, and although the application process closed before the COVID-19 lockdown, these categories and every single shortlisted submission has been incredibly relevant for the world we now find ourselves in. First of all, partnerships that help us to understand, innovate, fund, and deliver new things in new ways fast. Secondly, digital technology that allow us to communicate, learn, build capacity, meet new buyers and partners, and deliver goods and services globally. Thirdly, inclusive and sustainable trade that will support the obligation to build businesses back better, ensuring that this crisis does not exacerbate the inequalities that we're still all trying to resolve. The two-stage process of these awards delivered a very rich and varied set of applications from every corner of the globe. Over 60 applications were reviewed um, and 26 made it through to the next stage. 18 were then shortlisted. Members of the jury were inspired by the innovation and professionalism of these solutions to support businesses. My thanks to all of you for the effort that has gone into your applications. I'd also like to thank the jury for their service. As past winners, they certainly have a wealth of experience to draw upon to assess the applications. We are going to hear more from them shortly. It is my pleasure to invite Mr. Ibo Quezon, Minister Counselor at the Permanent Mission of Ghana here in Geneva to take the floor. ITC has received the very highest level of support from the Ghanaian government as we work together to plan and prepare for the WTPO conference. And we know that this will continue throughout next year. I'd like to thank the government and people of Ghana for this excellent partnership. And I've also indicated that as a member of the African diaspora, I will be returning to get my citizenship and piece of land. Thank you very much. <laughs> Please. Thank you very much, um, Madam Executive Director, Ms. Pamela Cook Hamilton. Indeed, um, we would be happy to welcome you to Accra and to give you that piece of land and possibly a passport under a certificate of agency. You are one of us. Excellencies, ambassadors, and permanent representatives gathered here, chief executives of TPOs, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the government of Ghana, and especially the President of the Republic, Nana Adudankwa Ekufuado, I would like to welcome you all to this very important event that we are hosting this afternoon. Indeed, this program ordinarily would have happened in Accra, and we were so excited and waiting to host you all. But the challenges of the time, the pandemic, has not allowed us to do so. Nevertheless, we are just excited about the fact that the conference will come off next year still in Accra. And we can't wait 
to let you have a feel of our famous hospitality, captioned under the term Aquaba. We extend Aquaba to you ahead of the time, and we assure you that upon your arrival in Accra next year, you would be well taken care of. Ghana deems it a great opportunity to partner with the ITC to host this very important event. The relevance of this institution, I think, becomes even more relevant in the times that we find ourselves. The role of TPOs, especially in the recovery efforts, cannot be overemphasized. And it is only proper that as stakeholders, we all support the ITC to deliver on its mandate and ensure that countries, especially the vulnerable ones amongst us, benefit from the institutional support that this great institution provides. This afternoon, I think um, we can only commend the work of our TPOs. Ghana, in 2008, was a direct beneficiary of this awards. We were nominees and we came out winners. And we know what that did for us. It spared us on to even put in more with a view to supporting our various stakeholders. So we are convinced that the nominees and more importantly, the winners of this award ceremony would not just rest on their hours, but would take every necessary step to reinvigorate their work at the various national capitals with a view to ensuring that our MSMEs benefit fully from the services that they provide, especially in this period that we find ourselves. So in a nutshell, I would like to assure the ITC and the ITC global stakeholder community of the commitment of the government of Ghana to welcoming you in Accra next year to host the conference itself, whilst we urge the winners, not only the winners, but the nominees and winners of this specific conference that we are hosting this afternoon, award ceremony, to push forward and help in the recovery process. This is what is confronting the world now. And as I indicated earlier, the role of TPOs is very crucial to this whole recovery process. We wish you well as nominees. We wish you well as award winners. And we wish the ITC the very best going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Ibo. And ITC and GAPA are working closely to confirm a new date for the conference in 2021. You can expect to hear from us uh, on that new date before the end of this year. So, but before we announce the nominees and the winners, it's valuable to check in with our jury, all of whom are previous winners. We want to understand what it takes and what it means to be a winner. I would like to thank our jury members and introduce them to you all. I'm hoping they will show up on the screen as our panelists. Firstly, we have Afua Asabia Asa, the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Export Promotion Authority. Thank you for joining us, Afua. We have Olisugan Oliwolo, the Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council. Lovely to see you, Sigan. We have Hamed Salem Mejigir, the Executive Director of the Export Development and Promotion Agency of the Qatar Development Bank, Tazdir. Welcome, Hamed. And we have Philippe Ivernou, the Director of International Cooperation of Business France. Afua, let's come back to you. You are both an award winner and the current conference host, and it's been a really great pleasure to work with you and your team over the last two years. Your award in 2018 was for the best use of information technologies. This recognized your investment in the market hub, delivering information online to exporters in Ghana and into potential buyers abroad. But the great lockdown of COVID-19 has taught us to value even more these digital tools that allow us to reach and service our clients. So 
Afua, please tell us more about how the use of digital solutions has changed things for GAPA. Over to you. Hello, everybody. And thank you, Anne. Winning the award for the best use of IT and the bid as conference hosts for WTPO was indeed a big deal for us. First of all, it was a huge plus as a government agency to leverage on technology to an extent that it became an award-winning initiative. It is a plus, especially when the government of Ghana has the digitization agenda high on its radar and is keen on ensuring that a huge percentage of public service organizations have their operations move away from manual settings to make use of the convenience and efficiency of technology um, in all that it provides. It is interesting to note that winning the best use of IT became a springboard for GEPA to win more and more awards, such as the best facilitator of direct investment 2020, outstanding export support award 2020, government agency of the year 2020, and other personality awards. With the bragging rights as hosts of the 2020 WTPU conference, um, this um, title continues to give our organization the best rostrum for the visibility we needed. The icing on the cake is the fact that Ghana is going to be the first country south of the Sahara to host this premium event. For us, this is just a win for Ghana Export Promotion Authority. It is, it is not just Ghana Export Promotion Authority that is winning, it is also a win for our African, West African brothers and sisters, and indeed um, the whole of Africa. Now talking about our award-winning initiative, the Market Hub, as we call it, is our official website, has turned out to be our number one portal and information reference point for exporters in Ghana, potential buyers abroad, media houses, commercial banks, and research institutions in Ghana looking for export-related information. The Ghana Export Promotion Authority is proud to be a best-in-class example of how technology can be effectively used to promote trade. In fact, GEPES Market Hub stands out as the best website for any public sector institution in Ghana. We have approximately 25,000 visitors to the site monthly, and we aim to double this figure by end of year. As we continue to deliver insights and market analysis updates as frequently as possible, and we want to thank UNIDO for their technical support. But on the average, we receive requests from 50 MSMEs monthly seeking to be profiled on the market hub as a visibility launch pad for their businesses. During the great lockdown, our social media platforms were very instrumental in driving traffic to the market hub. They were the prime channels for disseminating news on all events, health and safety interventions, and capacity building tips for small businesses. Our digital solutions put very vulnerable and versatile. Through these platforms, our stakeholders, irrespective of location, could be a part of our corporate social responsibility events, training, orientation, and capacity building sessions. For once, location or class size were not a challenge. That is the beauty of technology in the digital space. I must end by saying that adjusting to the new normal is the trade space in this trade space at its own exciting prospects. And we can only look forward to building back better. So thank you, ITC, and we look forward to seeing you in Ghana very soon. Thank you very much, Afua. We're certainly looking forward to it. Sigan, my friend, let's turn to you. You were an award winner for your Zero to Export capacity building program to diversify and grow the export base while embracing sustainability and inclusiveness. One of the strong points of your approach was the way in which you built positive relationships and new levels of trust with Nigerian businesses. Please describe how the process of applying for and then winning the award served your organization, and in particular in the last six months. Mm. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Anne. Nice to see uh, everybody. And let me uh, use this opportunity to say a very warm welcome 
to Pamela to ITC. Uh, I say ITC is a mother a mothership, and uh, using that Star, uh, Star Trek analogy, uh, we as uh, ITP uh, TPOs all over the world connect to ITC. So we welcome Pamela on board to ITC. Well, uh, I must thank ITC for this um, uh, this award uh, ceremony and what it has done to the to the NEPC. Uh, we were really super excited uh, on winning it. And but let me say, uh, the award came at a very good time when the Nigerian Export Promotion Council needed to broaden its influence and impact on its stakeholders. And uh, our shot at the award was first in 2016, and uh, that did not even yield a nomination. But we were not deterred because we now learned through the whole process what exactly we, we should do. So guided by that, we prepared for the 2018 awards. And, um, and that proved very interesting for us. We trained a lot of SMEs and MSMEs. And then we realized that by going through that process ourselves, uh, it helped us to get better trained to serve our, our clients. We aimed for the NEPC to be more client-centric, and that's exactly what the award-winning uh, process uh, did, did for us. We were able to communicate uh, the inputs diligently. We articulated the processes, and the expected outcomes uh, for us was very, very important. Uh, for the last two years, we have been... Uh, Inspired by this feat, and like Afua said, it it, it earned those bragging rights. Uh, so even on my card, I have it, WTPO award winner. And uh, unfortunately, I have to change my cards uh, from <laughs> after the new winners have been announced now. And uh, so, but it earned us that bragging rights. And uh, we our zero to export training is the most uh, popular capacity building uh, program, I, if I must say, in, in Nigeria. Uh, we have thousands of people applying for this training all the time, but we can only take so much. So we, this has been very, very useful uh, for us. And I, I tell all the participants, whether you win or not, you're still winners because you have gone through this process. And uh, we look forward to participating again when we're not in the jury. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Sigan. Yes, that's the downside of being on the jury. You can't be a candidate at the same time. Thank you very much. Hamad, let's turn to you. In 2015, you faced a crisis that matched in its economic impact for Qatar the challenges that TPOs elsewhere are facing today. TASDIA recognised the need for agility and recalibration and you reached out to new partners to help. This approach led to you receiving the award in 2018 for the best use of a partnership. We'd be interested to hear uh, if you've applied a similar approach in the current COVID-19 crisis. And what advice would you give other TPOs at this time, including about using partners at home and abroad? Uh, thanks, uh, Anna. I really appreciate uh, this host. Uh, well, um, uh, and I would, like, I would like to take this opportunity before I start to congratulate uh, Pamela for her uh, new mandate as the executive director of ITC. I'm sure she will add lots of value and will continue with the great legacy of the former directors that they added uh, in, in, for ITC and for other TBOs. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity, opportunity as well to thank Ghana for the great and uh, great efforts being to host the, the, the WTBO for 2020, but I'm sure the uh, 2021 will be a great to meet uh, physically, not just uh, virtually. So going back to your uh, question, Anne, well, that's correct. And the way Qatar managed the economic impact uh, in 2015 and the, the, the oil price crashed in that uh, year um, 
we, we we were learning how to deal with such impacts. And then we came uh, in 2017 uh, a bit ready with the, with the blockade that imposed by several countries, uh, which helped to minimize the economic con consequences of COVID-19. And in fact, in 2017, Qatari SMEs lost some of their major export destinations, the huge markets next door became available within a single day. So the Qatari companies had to shift their attention to other countries in the region. And Tasdeer reacted immediately to that change. Uh, exhibition participation plan was revised to enhance the visibility of Qatari products in available markets, as well as deep dive market studies were conducted in of countries which were out of sight of Qatari companies previously. Uh, besides, uh, we are really happy with the partnership uh, with ITC uh, and the three projects that current, uh, we are currently uh, doing with ITC, such as uh, the Global Trade Help Desk, which, by the way, uh, next week, uh, Bamilla and our CEO, Abdelaziz Al Khalifa, will, uh, will launch the Arabic version of GTH, the Global Trade Help Desk, which we really admire as having an uh, easy access to market analysis and uh, uh, information about international uh, trade, as well as the, 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 the partnership between ITC and Alibaba and uh, QDB to, uh, to, to enhance the presence of our SMEs in the e-commerce was really successful. And uh, finally, the, the GS1 pro uh, project uh, that's been uh, conducted as a partnership between ITC and uh, GS1 Global and QDB uh, I see, uh, will see the, the, the we will see the impact of it uh, soon, inshallah. So in addition, uh, a closer co uh, cooperation with Business of France, with Philip and his team, was really uh, activated for the past years. And we are we're really happy with the aim to utilize the experience and network of, the, of this partnership as a TBO, uh, and as well as to contribute to the knowledge transfer from Business of France to the STEER uh, and uh, uh, they provided us to the way to access with the EEN, the uh, European uh, Enterprise Network, which gave access to our, our SMEs uh, to the uh, European uh, bids and contracts. On top of that, TAS has initiated the rollout of the agent network in the priority countries, engaging with local leading matchmaking and sales agencies to represent the interests of Qatari exporters under the Common Partnership Framework. At the same time, at a QDB level, uh, we, we created a situation room uh, to resolve the large flow of crisis generated uh, because of COVID-19 and uh, the back in 2017, the, the blockade uh, issue as well. So those, by the time of COVID-19, I think the Qatari companies, to a large extent, were ready to face the challenges and uh, they already had access to alternative markets through partnerships established by QDB. Uh, and had the ability and knowledge to use the e-commerce and actively partnering with Alibaba and they had necessary government support uh, programs in place. So just to summarize my advice to other TBOs, uh, partner uh, early uh, because the world is changing too fast, partner globally because no market will remain exclusively yours forever, and partner digitally because this is the future of international trade, uh, and I will uh, conclude with congratulating all the TBOs who were with us today, and for those who didn't get, get the award, I'm sure uh, the future uh, is, is ahead of you, and you can really uh, achieve lots of uh, more than this, uh, just this award, I mean. and I'm sure this award will add lots of value for the, for the winners, as it added uh, to us, uh, uh, my friend Alonso, he said he, he was used it in his uh, business card and the same with us, we were using it in the end, in the, in the, in the end of our signature uh, emails. So it was really giving us the credibility to negotiate and to ask from uh, the government and the other entities the support that we need. So thank you. Thank you, great to hear. I love that comment, partner early, partner globally and partner digitally. Thank you. That's a great soundbite for us. Finally, Philippe, uh, you're wearing a number of hats. Business France was an award winner in 2016, was the host of WTPO in 2018, and as we've just heard, Business France was the key partner that helped Tasdeer at a time of crisis. This combination is no coincidence, 
In fact, it's the commitment of Business France to the WTPO awards and conference program that meant that Qatari and, and French TPO executives were in the same plane returning from Malaysia after the conference in 2012. And that provided the perfect opportunity to keep the conversation and the networking going. And it's this connection between TPOs that really is the hallmark of the WTPO conference. Philippe, your award in 2016 recognized the innovative way in which you offered services to emerging exporters through an integrated account management system on behalf of several ecosystem partners. Please share with us, did winning the award provide benefits for Business France? And what recommendations would you give to the winners today to make the most out of this opportunity? Thanks, Philippe. Well, uh, thank you, Anne, for this kind of word. Um, excellencies, dear friends uh, from ITC and sister TPOs, I'm very honored and happy to be with you uh, today. Uh, so let's move to your first question, Anne. What benefits did we get from winning the award back in 2016? Um, I would say the first and immediate benefit was simply the pride shared with all Business Front staff and especially for those who were directly involved in the program for which Business France got the award. So this went from, wow, it's official, we are the world's best, which was probably a bit overstated, uh, to more measured, uh, well, our peers recognize the quality of our work and the value of our initiative, and that's good for us. And in a very practical manner, it also gave us a valuable addition to our email signatures, as previously mentioned by the other winners. Uh, second medium term impact was the, I would say, weaponization of the award in our relationship with our supervising ministries and parliaments. Uh, when it comes to negotiating our contract of objectives every three years and uh, contract of objectives and means, and also our annual budget, they always end up asking questions on whether we stand a comparison with our neighbors and competitors, especially in Europe, in terms of quality of services, results obtained, HR, budget resource, etc. So in that matter, this award voted by our peers and sanctioned by ITC uh, is actually a very powerful fuel in our discussion with our partners. The third and probably more long-term benefit is that it has also comforted our management, top management, in their innovation policy and search for new services and ways to better serve our customers. Uh, oddly enough, or maybe not so oddly indeed, this award humbled us in so far as it kind of compelled us to excel. If we pretend to be top of the class, uh, as are uh, righteously the winners of the award, we must demonstrate it always. As for your second question on my recommendation to the winners, um, to be honest, I'm not sure uh, they would need any since by construction, they are smart enough and thus able to find out by themselves. Uh, I will anyway try two suggestions, if uh, I may. A first and very philosophic one is in line with what I just said. You should not, and we at Business France certainly did not see this award as a kind of comfortable armchair on which you can sit and enjoy the perks attached forever. On the contrary, we rather took it as a springboard, which could be used to bounce back on new initiatives, new innovations, new efforts to always do better. Uh, no need to say that in the, the challenging times of COVID-19, this forward thinking attitude is more important than ever. Past wins and successes give you confidence, will help you build a better future that they do not build it for you. My second uh, suggestion is more practical and definitely more fruit bearing. Take this award as an outstanding opportunity to further strengthen your relationship with ITC. This is what we at Business France have been doing since 2016 with the organization in 2018 of the WTPO conference in Paris, with our participation to the TISI advisory board, and also with our joint MOPS cooperation project with 21 African TPOs, uh, some of which are in this room today, uh, from 2018 to 2020, which was an amazing adventure. Let's not forget also the participation to this award jury in 2018 and again in 2020, which was a very exciting experience of peer-to-peer -peer cooperation. 
Not only we enjoyed every occasion to work with an outstanding team of experts, but we also learned a lot from their extensive knowledge and know-how on trade promotion affairs. To conclude, I would say that, uh, well, if you allow me, our love affair with ITC is far from over. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Philip. Very kind words. And I think uh, very interesting to hear that this was a moment of humility as well as a moment of pride. So thank you again to all our jury members. I know the time is pressing and you want to find out who those winners are today. Um, but I really wanted to do thank our jury members to their commitment to the awards process over the last 12 months uh, with, com with hard work, professionalism and integrity. So we've learned that to be a winner, it takes this commitment to a formal process of service design. It takes smart new ways of delivering for effectiveness and efficiency, and it takes a drive for demonstrable results. A winning service offering will be desirable, feasible, and viable. We know that the process itself brings value to applicants, and we now know that winning brings this opportunity for recognition and credibility with stakeholders. It brings validation and confidence building for your staff, and it brings the opportunity to share your good practice to help others, and as a future jury member, to learn from the innovative solutions from dozens of TPOs around the world. So, we're now reaching the crucial announcement of this year's winners, my final appreciation to the jury, and a welcome to my colleague, Natalie, who will emcee the awards ceremony. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. We've now come to the time of the event that everyone has been waiting for. Just before our ceremony got underway, you may have seen the videos that have been created by each one of the shortlisted candidates who are with us from around the world. A warm welcome and, again, congratulations to each of the nominees. They are represented here at the International Trade Center by the senior diplomat from their countries and the senior representative of each nominated organization is online impatiently waiting around the world. The World Trade Promotion Organization Awards, as you've heard, recognize excellence in trade support services. Today, we're celebrating those organizations for outstanding performance in their export development initiatives. Their work is contributing to national economic growth. The jury, who you've just seen in the panel discussion, is made up of very distinguished leaders in the field who do have and have strengthened their cooperation with the International Trade Center and other partners in this network. They have included the senior representatives of those winning organizations in 2018, the host from 2018, who was the award winner in 2016, and of course the chair, the executive director of the International Trade Center. This year we received a record number of applications, and so we believe there is a real value in this awards process. The jury felt that all of the nominees, as you've heard them say, really deserve recognition for what they've done, and there's so much for all of us to learn from each of their initiatives. Now let's turn a moment to the process for the awards. We're going to announce the three winners by category. First, we will announce the two runners-up in each category, and then we will announce the winner. And for all of the people who are listening in around the world, as well as those in this room who would like to share the news on Twitter, our hashtag is WTPO20. And now, the awards. I would like to invite Pamela Koch Hamilton, the Executive Director of the International Trade Center, to return to the stage. Our first category is Best Use of Partnerships. This award recognizes the successful use of integrated partnerships and networks to advance export development initiatives. The nominees are Pro Colombia, online in Bogota, the Engineering Export Council of Egypt in Cairo, 
Business Sweden in Stockholm, the Netherlands Enterprise Agency in The Hague, the Tanzania Trade Development Authority, Tantrade in Dar es Salaam, Via Trade in Hanoi, and Zim Trade online in Harare. Pamela, please tell us the runner-up awards. Okay, uh, the runners-up are Tanzania Trade Development Authority, Tantrade, well done. And the second is Vietnam Trade Promotion Agency, Viet Trade, um, Excellence in Export Development Initiatives, and uh, yes, for both. Congratulations. It's been exciting to see their, a glimpse of their expressions as they won. Tanzania Trade Development Authority is recognized for its online business clinic. This is a one-stop shop which has helped over 1,600 businesses with partners such as the National Bank of Commerce and associations for cassava and for leather. And Via Trade is recognized for its national export expert network. They've built up a quality network of international and national trainers, and they have export planning tools, which they have been using to coach SMEs in their country, and it has led to 100 new contracts for them. And now, drum roll, the first place winner for this category, Pamela. And the winner is... Ta -da -da, ta -da -da. <laughs> Business Sweden. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Business Sweden is facilitating high potential opportunities. They've brought together large firms and SMEs to compete together when they bid for infrastructure projects in energy, mining, transportation, and information and communications technologies industries. This partnership has been really valuable because 20 projects are underway globally and they're valued at 4.7 billion euros and more than half of the participating companies are SMEs. I would like to invite to the stage His Excellency Ambassador Ansen of Sweden to say a few words and for a photo. Oh, sorry. I leave it to you now. Uh, okay, th thank you very much. Uh, I'm actually uh, uh, not uh, honored to be here. Uh, it's actually my colleagues in Stockholm that is supposed to stand here today. I saw that uh, the Director General of uh, Business Sweden, uh, Mrs. Ulva Berg, is online. So all uh, applause go to the Business Sweden. But uh, we work very closely with Business Sweden, and we do have our trade promotion uh, days in Stockholm every year where we go through all the projects, and it's inspiring to listen to, and it's inspiring to take part of. Uh, for your knowledge, here in Geneva, we are also doing business promotion to the UN here in Geneva, where I'm uh, involved, and uh, so Business Sweden is very active, so I can just say I uh, congratulate they are the winner. Thank you very much. And now we will be speaking to the Director General of Business Sweden, or rather he will be speaking to us. Are they online? Or are we still getting them I, online? And uh, we are so uh, humble and we are grateful. And the trade never happens in isolation. So please, uh, dear jury and uh, dear excellencies, dear ITC and uh, dear WTPO organizers and all other trade promoters over the world. This is indeed a very great honor and we have been fighting quite a lot for many years to try to win this award. So this is big for us at Business Sweden. Partnership and collaboration have been at the core of Business Sweden's activities since more than six years back. And it still certainly is from so many different perspectives. 
At Business Sweden, we have focused on building partnerships, not only with Swedish companies, both small ones, micro companies, and really big ones, but also with the Swedish government representatives, with uh, government agencies, and with academia. We are focused on building partnerships uh, internationally and locally on more than 45 markets where we have been uh, active since many years back. We have built partnerships to uh, do capacity building, to do technology transfer, and also to find the right type of financing in connection with doing the largest infrastructural deals. Now, in these very difficult times, global trade is more important than ever. Global trade is important for growth and for job creation, and it is absolutely key in delivering on the Paris Agreement and on the SDGs. I would like to take this opportunity to extend a big thank you to all our partners, to our friends at ITC and WTPO, but also to my own organization, who have been working relentlessly in order for us to become a world-class trade and invest promoting organization. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. And thank you and congratulations to Sweden. We now turn to the second award category, and that is best use of information technology. This award recognizes a digital innovation introduced by a trade promotion organization that improves productivity, efficiency, marketing, or performance. For this award, we've invited our host of the World Trade Promotion Organization Conference 2020 in Ghana to announce the winners for this category. And the candidates for this award are Apex Brazil, online from Brasilia, the China Council for the Promotion of International Trade in Beijing, Enterprise Georgia in Tbilisi, Malaysia External Trade Development Corporation in Kuala Lumpur, Portugal Global Trade and Investment Agency in Lisbon, and online from Dubai, Dubai Exports. And now, if Afwa, I see she's online, and she's going to tell us the runners-up. And the runners-up are Malaysia External Trade Development Corporation, Matrade, Excellence in Export Development Initiatives, Best Use of Information Technology. The next is China Council for the Promotion of International Trade, CCPIT, Excellence in Export Development Initiatives, Best Use of Information Technology. And LEPL Enterprise Georgia. Oh, she told us. <laughs> you Excellence in, they are all nominees. I'm waiting to announce the winner, not yet. Okay. Excellence for development initiatives, best use of information technology. Stay tuned in for the winner. We have to keep you on your toes. Malaysia. The External Trade Development Corporation recognized for the My Export online service. This service provides Malaysian exporters access to a wealth of real-time trade information. They've gotten 15,000 subscribers already and generated 4,200 leads last year. Quite impressive. And also recognition to the China Council for the Promotion of International Trade for its trusted traders platform. They've already provided standardized credit assessments to 300 companies and created a database of 300,000 exporters and importers in both Chinese and English. So congratulations to our runners-up. And now, let us hear the first place winner. And the winner is LEPL Enterprise Georgia for the best use of information technology. Let's hear about what Enterprise Georgia's done. Rather interesting, they have connected 
remote Georgian companies and supported them to get into new international markets with quality training that they didn't have before on export readiness and market diversification. There are educational institutions who are using it, and now the Bank of Georgia is even adding this training to its own online platform, extending the reach of this to millions of bank customers in the country. I would like to invite to the stage His Excellency, Ambassador Maisuratse, for a photo and to say a few words. Congratulations. Is Apua online? Please say a few words. Thank you. So, thank you very much, first of all, dear Executive Director, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It's really huge responsibility and great honor to be here with you and to represent my country. Uh, Enterprise Georgia is relatively young organization, which is part of the Ministry of Economy and Sustainable Development, and it's responsible for business support and uh, export promotion in my country. You are well aware that this year is extremely difficult and very challenging, and in order to address the difficulties related to COVID pandemic, Enterprise Georgia elaborated and launched very effective, very important online mechanism supporting both entrepreneurs and exporters. So, once again, thank you very much. Let me express our sincere gratitude for this recognition, and we will continue. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. And now, online from Tbilisi, we should be hearing from the CEO of Enterprise Georgia. Are they technical problems? Okay, if they come on later, you just let me know. They're probably celebrating, like Sweden, getting out the balloons. And we will move, in the meantime, to the third category, which is the best initiative to advance trade-related sustainable development goals. This award focuses on initiatives that respond to one or more of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I invite Pamela to be prepared to announce our runners-up and our winners. But first, I will tell you the candidates. The candidates are Advantage Austria, who are online with us from Vienna, Procomer in Costa Rica, in San Jose, are online. We have Enterprise Lithuania in Vilnius, Export St. Lucia in Castries, and ISEX Trade and, Deve and Investment Spain online from Madrid. Pamela, over to you, the okay. runners up. Oh, let's give them a moment. I think they're still coming in. So we can make sure they're all there. I think they are there and waiting. Okay, let's hear the runners up. She's opening up. Okay, uh, the runners up are Export St. Lucia, Excellence in Export Development Initiatives, Best Initiative to Ensure that Trade is Inclusive and Sustainable. And the other runner up is ISEC Spain, Trade and Investment, Excellence in Export Development Initiatives, runner up, Best Initiative to Ensure that Trade is Inclusive and Sustainable. Congratulations, St. Lucia and Spain. Export St. Lucia has a program to develop CMOS exports. And their exports jumped from 55,000 to nearly 558,000 between 2018 and 2019, thanks to this export development program, which obtained a geographical indication of origin for its sun-dried sea moss. And this has been very helpful for them to diversify their market exports. They had tried a number of things, and this one is really taking off. And ISEC Spain Trade and Investment is recognized for a program that's called ISEC Impact Plus. This program has helped over 30 Spanish companies to develop suppliers in five different countries around the world which are targeting low-income communities 
and ensuring that the initiatives are both socially and environmentally sustainable. So congratulations to our runners-up for these awards. Thank you very much. And now it's time for the first place winner in this last category. And over to you. Okay. And the winner is Export Promotion Agency of Costa Rica, Procomer. Congratulations. <laughs> so congratulations to Procomer, the Export Promotion Agency of Costa Rica, for its green growth platform. Seed capital for innovations has helped 2,500 exporters to place 4,500 products in more than 155 destinations with this program. Among its partners are Costa Rica USA Foundation for Cooperation and the Inter-American Development Bank. Very interesting initiative. And we see here Her Excellency Ambassador Abraham to have a few words with us. Congratulations. Distinguished West uh, guest, I'm honored to receive this award in person on behalf of ProCommerce and his general manager, Pedro Beiruti, who is uh, here with us in the, in the, in the media and in the internet. I will have been fantastic that my fellow colleagues from ProCommerce could be, have been here in person accepting this recognition to their work and vision. However, the new circumstances have granted me the great privilege to be one uh, holding this prize. I want to thank uh, the organizers for acknowledging ProCommerce compromise with improving Costa Rica's productive and business sector with an innovative, sustainable, and solid platform, platform such as Green Growth Program. So far, the program has benefited almost 190 enterprises, granting them non-refundable funds to promote their projects on certifications and environmental innovations of sustainable products and processes, allowing them to reach international markets and enhance our competitiveness. As you can see on all front lines, Costa Rica is working to implement its compromise with the SDGs and the Agenda 2030. So this is a welcome recognition to our country's vision and leadership. Thank you so much and uh, I'm very grateful from, for Pedro. And we have Pedro with us here to share his views. Please, over to you. Yes, thank you very much. This is the first uh, 6 a.m. Meetings, meeting I have uh, enjoyed in the last uh, few months. So <laughs> I'm very happy about that. I'm sad I don't have balloons like uh, Sweden had, but uh, it is because of the, of the time. Uh, definitely, this is a, a recognition that makes us feel uh, proud and, and grateful because more than a recognition for a specific project or, or program that we have uh, developed over the last uh, uh, year or so, this is a recognition of Costa Rica's decades of efforts to protect our planet, just as Ambassador Abraham said. Costa Rica is a small country of only 4 million people, but we are a giant in terms of uh, sustainability. Uh, it is part of our identity, it's part of, uh, part of our DNA, and it is part of our vision. For Procomer, the trade promotion organization of Costa Rica, uh, it is also a, a culmination of, of an effort because we have a, a strategy with three main pillars, which are uh, innovation, inclusion, and sustainability. And this project is basically a combination of, of all of them. Trade and sustainability for us is, is key because we want to build uh, conscious trading as part of building a better world. Thank you very much and congratulations to all the runners up and to everyone participating in, in this event. Happy to see some familiar faces and wish you to see 
you face to face pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you very much from Procomer and congratulations. I now invite everyone to have a round of applause for all of the winners and runners up today. Thank you. And I would now like to welcome to the stage Anders Arrow, the Director of the Division for Enterprises and Institutions, for the closing remarks. So thank you very much and good afternoon to all of you. Congratulations to the winners and to the other nominees. Your pleasure in being recognized is a testament to your commitment to excellence. Now, more than ever, this commitment is making a difference. This conversation about innovation and excellence is not over. We are already looking forward to the rescheduled World GPO Conference in 2021. And we will keep you all informed as the details shape up. Meanwhile, on the road to Accra, we will be looking for opportunities to connect you with each other share good practices, and offer peer support. Before we close, I would like to acknowledge the first-rate teamwork between the teams at ITC, and you see some of them over there, producing this event, and to thank each one for your commitment and support, and a special thank to you and Penstein for the coordination, design, and delivery of this first-ever hybrid awards ceremony. So thanks. If you represent a country that was a winner or runner-up of a category, please do stay behind for a few extra minutes for photographs. Wishing you all good health, good results, and good trade. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. <laughs>